Head down, approach the ball, no rush, put some chalk on, right. walk up to the table, there you go, head down, that's it, I know I don't get my head fully, I know I don't get my head fully down, but go on, you go again, go again. I got that one right, didn't I? God, am I potting well tonight? I am potting well tonight. Foggy, I owe you 50 quid. I've had one beer. Bulmers. And at four quid they can keep it. Let's see if I can do this shot here. I'm trying to get this shot. I think my potting is second to none on single shots but I think the actual doubles and triples is good my potting is exceptional but my brake building I'm running out of position too much for my life Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Before I start this video, I want to give a shout out to Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire Packaging, Climate Cool, Edlington Motors and JJ Crump and Son. Thank you for your continued support moving forward. Right, helmets of the month. Yeah, that's right. It's that time again. It's the time of month where everybody sends all the votes in to Porky Corner at mail.com and you give me a list of your top 15 helmets of the month. People basically male or female because we like to do equality but people in the boxing industry who have behaved like helmets and we know what that is it can be anything people just talking crap people behaving like divas and people generally telling tales because there's a lot of people in boxing they tell tales to the powers that be and then people they know who they are, don't you? <laughs> That's what happens. We're in an industry where people come with a smile and then they stick the knife in your back. So what can you do? What can you do? Now, here's the helmets list. Uh, From 15, 
like the green Nike Air Force ones are cool, aren't they? Uh, from a bit chilly, isn't it? From 15 down to number one. Now I'm gonna do this in 15 minutes. Right, number 15, John Fury. Well, he made a bit of a nuisance of it of a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, regarding the Ben Davidson trainer situation, and there's a lot of people who like Ben Davidson in boxing and big him up and say he's a good trainer and that. And if he were no good, he wouldn't be training Tyson, would he? And a lot of people didn't like it. So, John Fury, element number 15. I like John Fury, I don't know where his number is somewhere. Got on alright with him. Sitting fight, actually. Sorry, fight Palomine Malpas. Uh, he got beat, but he took the fight on sh on, a, on short notice. Uh, <laughs> Number fourteen. If we would have had more days in the month for this to for this kid here, he would have he would have ended up winning it because the amount of votes that he's had. You know, in the last few, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If it, amount of time, amount of votes that, sorry, this kid's got in the last few days since he, since the video, he would have ended up winning it, winning it. In at 14, Umar, AFL Umar. Regarding the tweet that I sent Coogan Cassius and he replied, Porky, Umar will ask Eddie about this. We're talking bot accounts. Now, Umar, when you asked Eddie about it, it all looked prearranged to me. You passed him your phone, and Eddie picked it out. He went, oh, uh, oh, Sir Edward, that must be me. Oh, now, now we, uh, we don't do, uh, we don't, I don't know anything about that. And Dazon won't tell you anything. Eddie shut you down, Umar, in 52 seconds. You never asked him. You never told him all the tweet were off me. You basically bottled it. You bottled it. So what can you do? Uh, so Umar IFL Umar, you are number 14 for being a bottled job. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. Uh, so... Uh, in at number 13, Frank Smith with the spots. Now, Frank Smith, I like Frank Smith, but he doesn't help himself, does he? But I think that Frank Smith coming out and trying a few little moves here, there and everywhere in IFLs probably riled people up. A few people have come out and said they want to vote for Frank Smith because they were milking certain situations uh, for PR. I don't know, but in that his job, in that their job in boxing, I don't know. I ain't got a problem with anybody doing PR in boxing, but I do have a problem when people start telling tales to boxing board of control, and then people know who they are, don't you? <laughs> but there's no love lost, is there, between me and a certain few people? But it is what it is, isn't it? Boxing is full of grasses of people that tell tales, but Frank Smith. Your number 13, with the spots. Number 12, Spencer Oliver, you gim. You're voted, and I'd have voted for you as well, but I just have to say on video that, that what I think about you and people will make their own assumptions up. You're running around bigging up this KSI, Logan Paul thing, and it's just basically embarrassing. So we all know that you were involved with KSI versus Logan Paul number one, and now you're involved with KSI Logan Paul number two because you want to get your hand in the cookie jar, don't you? So maybe a white collar boxing's way forward, who knows? But Spencer Oliver, you've had a ton of votes. You're number 12. So for Elmer a month. Number 11, John Rowling. Oh my god, John Rowling from the Gimp Squad at BT Sport. Not my BT Sport. I've actually got BT Sport at home, but John Rowling's. You're an Elmer, number 11. 
Uh, reason being, you're biased. And boxing fans, they can't cope with that biasness, can they? So John Rowlands, John Rowlands, sorry, you've been voted. Now, number 10, Coogan Cassius. I don't like to put Coogan in helmets. I don't think he's ever been in it, has he? I'm not sure some of you porky hardcores will be able to tell me if Coogan's been in helmets, but Coogan's in. Probably, a few emails at the point you know, it's that you're not doing the right line of questioning. You're not telling your staff to do the jobs right. When you get these people on the hook, you're supposed to move in for the kill. You're not supposed to tickle the feet with a feather duster, Coogan. You've made big strides forward in a decade in boxing. You've been a game changer. I know you've got probably mortgages around your neck and all this, but you've got a start. You've got to, you've got to go for them, Coogan. Go for it now, Coogan. You've got to get them up back foot. You've got an opportunity, Coogan, to ask Eddie Earn some proper questions, and I mean proper. Yes, I understand that if you upset Eddie Earn, that he can drop you like a stone. And if Eddie Earn drops you, Coogan, well, the IFL would it cease to exist? I don't know. But you've got all this has got to come to an head sooner or later you've got to get yourself in position to ask some proper proper questions Coogan proper questions you want to be asking Eddie Earn about white pay-per-views 20 quid when he started doing it we hardly have us an eight or 15 quid but the minimum wage has not gone up has it cost of living's going up and pay-per-views going up but wages are not going up so why don't you do what you, what you say you're doing Eddie for fans and why don't Coogan stick up for the fans instead of tweeting out things like you know uh, so and so and so and so what around and all it look when you say something Coogan it's it's for the fans it's the people take it and, and as gospel you've got a platform with millions of people come on you've got to start acting like you're for the fans do it for the fans, Coogan. Do it for the fans. Don't think about press passers. Do it for the fans and say, look, because if Eddie Earn, if you got to... Listen, Coogan, this is how I look at it. Eddie Earn needs you, Coogan. You don't need Eddie Earn. You will always get a living out of IFL. He needs you, mate. Trust me, he needs you. Otherwise, what are they going to do? He said, are you just going to slot Rob Tebbit in there or slot Matchroom Boxing YouTube account because they seem to be copying what you're doing, Coogan. But come on, do it for fans, Coogan. Ask some proper questions. So, in at number nine is Johnny. Well, he's always there or thereabouts, isn't he? Johnny Nelson. Oh, my God. Johnny's just been voted for, uh, that's not turned on that, and I'm going in a minute, I've got time to mess about with that, it needs warming up. Somebody sent me an email, this is why I'm voting for Johnny Nelson, Porky. And I put, where's email? And at the bottom it said, because he's Johnny Nelson. <laughs> and this same kid votes for him all the time, but others do. But Johnny Nelson, number nine, pound for pound, helmet of the month. In at number eight, it's Penfold. Well, he had to be in the mix, didn't he, Penfold? He's there or thereabouts, Penfold. I went to Penfold's gym in about two hours. I just got to go to Glen Rose gym and then I'm going to Penfold's gym. You never know, I might bump into him, eh? So, funny thing is though, do you know all these people, whenever they see me, they're all like, oh, hey up Porky, how you doing? And, Give me big hugs and shit, things like that. What the fucking? Nothing but a G thing, baby. Death Row is a label that pays me. Penfold, Dave Caldwell, oh my god. I don't know. Will he be sending Chris Smedley a Christmas card this year? I know what Chris would like to send him, and it's not a Christmas card. In at number seven. It's the ginger winger himself, Steffi 
Bertie Smalls Bull. Your new nickname, Steffi. Bertie Smalls. Google Bertie Smalls. All you boxing fans out there need to start Googling Bertie Smalls. And that's Steffi Bull's new name. Now, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why I refer to him on my channel as Bertie Smalls. Steffi Bull, your no nickname is Bertie Smalls. You've never done a day in jail in your life. Why is that? Why is that, Steffi? You've never done a day in jail in your life. But I'd have your number one every month, but you're number seven this month, Bertie. So jog on. Number six, Tyson Fury. Well, I told you all, dinner is not going to fight Wilder, February 22nd. I've been saying it for 11 months, and you've all been saying, no, he'll fight Wilder. Why would he fight? Why is he going to fight Wilder? He fought him last December. We're in, we're in November now, November the 1st. He's not going to fight him, is he? He's not going to fight Wilder next month. Uh, sorry, in Feb. It's, it's a year, in four weeks, it's a year since Wilder fought Tyson Fury. And he doesn't want that smoke. But Wilder probably doesn't want the smoke off Tyson. You know, messing about and chasing him around rings. It's hard to hit, isn't it? So Wilder don't want it, I don't think, and I don't think Tyson does, but I think if Wilder had to fight him, I think he would. But no, I don't think he wants to fight uh, Wilder. I think he's going to mess about and just keep fighting the Tom Swartz of this world. But Wilder, no. In fact, Jarrell Miller, though. So, because it looks like Jarrell Miller's going to ESPN. Jarrell Miller and Tyson Fury. Keep watching. So, a bit disappointing. But it is what it is, isn't it? Number five, the disappearing man himself. What were he on? What were he on last week? Catchphrase or something, it? ITV, Tony, the disappearing man, Bellew. In fact, I think I've got it on my phone, Anna. Let's have a look. Now, since he's been, been retired, he's been to 20 odd matchroom shows, the disappearing man, and he's been on. Sports, Sky Sports Punditry, Soccer AM twice, A League of Their Own twice, numerous IFL interviews, 27, Jesus, and now catchphrase, the, Invis the Invisible Man himself, oh, somebody sent me that, The Invisible Man himself, but, well, you've got to love Tony Bell, you haven't you, because he is the best bogus I've ever seen in my life. The man who's never beat a champion ended up British Commonwealth European and a world champion, Tony Bellew. So, number four, David Price, the man who keeps promising a lot. And I can knock you out with either hand. Well, I just didn't turn up. I felt a bit flat on the night. Didn't we hear that after the Povetkin fight? I didn't turn up. I feel a bit flat on the night. We then had Tom Little, Cash Alley, Dave Allen, and now Chisora. And we're back to, I felt a bit flat on night. Now they're talking about rebuilding David Price and him coming again. David Price has been knocked out seven times. I don't want to see him on TV again. Sooner or later he's going to get hurt, isn't he? So I think it's best that he retires. So In at number three, David A. David Costcutter Hay. Oh my God, I'm... I'm how embarrassing is David A becoming at the moment? Pimping himself out with Chisora. Is he Chisora's pimp or is he pimping himself? I don't know, but all this talk about stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. We're talking David Price, aren't we? Who Povetkin's just run over recently. So, I'm not, I don't want to hear about David Price once hit me with an up, a left uppercut to my chin and shook me to my boots. David, you admitted that was in 2010. 2010? We're 2019. His best wins, Audley Harrison, seven years ago. Do me a favour. Uh, number two, Dave Allen. Dave Allen, the man that turned a quarter of a million down and asked for 350. Oh my God! You've got to give Dave Allen that. Is he crazy or what? A lad from Cunningsburg, Doncaster, turns down that amount of money and asks for nearly double. How crazy is that? 
That's helmet behaviour. I've got loads and loads of emails for that. But I've also heard that Dave's sat in his house now thinking, if only I'd have took that money. What will happen? I don't know. We don't know. We'll have to keep following. Number one. He's not been number one for a long time. Edward Hearn. Sir Edward Hearn. How are we doing, Eddie? Number one. Helmet of the month. The Porky's Corner. October. Pound for pound helmet. 2019. Sir Edward Hearn. There you go. So a quick rundown on that for you folks. Hang on, I'll throw it in bin. <laughs> Good job it's on it where it's paper bin. A quick countdown. Oh, that's from last. That's from the other day. Have a look. That's not good, is it? I'll have to edit that out, Nicola, that bit. Rooting around it, Ben. I'm like Eddie Yates off Cora. Here we are, rooting down. Number 15, John Fury. Number 14, Umar IFL. Umar. 13, Frank Smith with the spots. 12, Spencer Oliver with Jug Ears. Uh, 11, John Rowling. Uh, you helmet. 10, uh, Coogan Cassius. Number 9, uh, Johnny Nelson. Number 8, Dave Cornwell. 7, Steffi Bull. 6, Tyson Fury. 5, Tony Bell. You 4, David Price. 3, David A. 2, Dave Allen. And number 1, Eddie Earn. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Shout out to Climate Cool, Edward in Doncaster, JJ Crump, and Innovation Alloys. Peace out, have a good week. me done. Come on. I'm going for a pint of orange. Right, here's another knuckle shot for you, watch this. <laughs> um. We'll try that again, we'll try it at a different angle though this time. <laughs> 